anything with the dirty window and the sun. Yep. So guys, the uh, Bonneville is back. You haven't seen it in a minute. Uh, it's really just been sitting. You saw in that test drive video that we noticed like this really bad shaking in the car. And uh, we think we know what it is. We kind of referenced it in the last video. If you reference episode, I think it was like 14. I'll put the correct episode below. At uh, 144. 144 and then 340. You can see that when we put this together, the whole timing and everything, these 3800s have a balance shaft that reduces vibrations. Well, we didn't know, but it needed to be timed specifically. That balance shaft, that sprocket has a timing mark that we I just, didn't see. We just didn't see it. And then when we put together Project F's motor, I, I mean, you can see right here, we just completely deleted it. It's not here. So we didn't have to worry about it. And we didn't notice then either, because yeah. like, why would we if it's not going back in the engine? So this whole time the balance shaft has been out of time by vibrating. like 130 degrees i looked at it it is about a, out of degrees 130 or it's at, out by 130 degrees so Not when good. it's when it's spinning it's supposed to cancel out it's supposed to work with the vibrations in the motor to cancel it out this is working against it basically because it's yeah. flipped so it's uh it i don't think it could cause damage but it's definitely like you feel it and uh, with it just not being balanced, it's the same thing when you don't balance a rotating assembly or if it's off by a lot, it just doesn't yeah. make things happy exactly, yeah, you know? Yeah, it, it, uh, it likes to rattle the entire interior now. Yep. And uh, you know, with that cheap GM interior, there, there can only be so much rattle before that plastic starts cracking. <laughs> yeah, so we also have a uh, vacuum gauge, uh, just to test vacuum. We'll probably just remove this, put a T in it and then test the vacuum real fast just to see if it's where it should be. And I'm thinking it's these sh uh, these uh, Garland gaskets that uh, yeah. Garlock or whatever that green material is. Yeah, so we need to we need to take this apart anyways to replace the gaskets. Yeah, and our plan with that is is that we're just gonna get the, the Garlock or whatever that green material, material is called. We're gonna get that material and make our own gaskets because we tried using the ZZP gaskets, but this is not a ZZP intercooler yeah. and this is a ported blower and so it's not correct of what we had so i had to modify it anyways and some portions were just very Still thin iffy. very thin yeah to where there was almost like you know a quarter inch of gasket material uh you know coming out right at the right at the seams and it yeah. just seems like it's not enough to seal it and it it might just be uh the vac leak might be from there we're going to assess this um we're going to see what it would take to take off the front cover because that's where it's at we're hoping we don't have to remove like the motor mount. If we did, then I mean it's not like the total end of the world, but it would suck. But uh, so at at very least, going gonna, under the knife again. We're gonna need to get the harmonic balancer off, which um, we've done before. Last time me and Davis did it while the car was running, we had to get it off with uh, you know the engine's own torque. So we had to put <laughs> pro, put a breaker we had to bar, put a breaker bar, and turned over the motor turn over the motor with it on it so, because none of our impacts could do it and uh, it we perfectly. had to wedge it between a uh, the asphalt and a battery car battery and uh, very sketchy I don't rec I don't recommend that unless yeah. you need to and so we'll probably have to do it that same way we'll break that off we'll uh, take the harmonic balancer off all the accessories that need to be you know we, we have that stronger impact now the, the stronger impact yeah we'd have to be able to like reach 400, it which is like 400 right pounds yeah, yeah that'd take it like, off yeah so I hope hope because then, trust me, it's pretty pretty sketchy doing it that way because it would throw the wrench. It yeah. would throw it. Yeah, the and long, like, foot long or, like, 18, 20 inch breaker bar it would throw it. It would throw it. And, and so it's not great, but hey, if you're out of options, that, that, it is, worked. A, that is a way that will work. Um, and then. Commons um, confirmed the transmission is not the problem. Yeah. It could still have problems, who knows, but it's not what's causing the vibrations. We drove it, it seemed fine, so. And you know. they drove it, and it seemed fine. I think that we should consider taking the headers off completely and uh, fucking Redoing it. just steel brushing them. Yeah, you know, because just clean off all the paint. You the, can see this side, I mean, it's kind of worn off already, but the crossover pipe, it still stinks. You guys obviously can't smell it, but you can yeah. smell the burning paint. The thing the thing is, is that this thing has, has gone through, a, I'm going to say, at least 10 heat cycles yeah. since the engine fully has warm. been put in. Yeah. Fully warm, and it's still reeks every time i get out of the car that paint is just disgusting yep and i think i don't know why it did that because those were high temp paints that we put on specific to headers i think yep it was 
didn't didn't work because I think the primer I mean, was not the was not heat resistant. What we could do this time is yeah, strip them. We could do just like wrap. We can do the uh, carbon wrap or whatever it is. That's true. Or right? we can even send them out to get uh, ceramic uh, coated. I would I would be interested. They're pretty cheap ass headers, so I'm not sure if ceramic coating it would be worth more than the headers. I'm not sure if that would be a. Well, I would be okay with that depending on the price. However, wrapping them would be cool. We're so, just yeah. we're just gonna assess it. See. Uh, what it'll take to get the front cover off. I mean, people do cam swaps on these cars with the motor in, so we should effectively be able to take off the front cover. All right, guys, we got the, the wheel removed. And uh, looking in here, you have a better picture. So there's the balancer. Behind it is the cover. Uh, so we actually have a direct shot with our, our big impact, so just remove the balancer, which will be good. And then we'll probably want to remove this uh, motor mount. Let's uh, get a jack under here so I can crawl under and look. Okay. Um, but yeah, guys, I think we'll probably need to remove this mount. It's not the end of the world. It's just that and then two bolts and then one bolt up top. The one up top is kind of hard to get to, but not super crazy. At least loosen it so we can get to it. I need to reference some photos of what the, the timing cover even looks like on this thing. We got, we got an engine right there. Hell yeah. It's kind of covered by everything though. True, actually. It's just as covered. Oh uh, yeah, it's attached to the whole coolant arm here. So yeah, the cover does look like it goes into that. Well, once we have the balancer off, we'll have a better idea of what it looks like. Yep, so uh, let's see. Yeah, so the balancer's there. It's just hard to see the actual cover. Right. Honestly, we're going to need to have to remove that. I mean, we just have to be prepared to remove the motor mount because... Uh, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I don't see any other way around it. Otherwise, uh, no, it doesn't look like this is leaking any oil. On the front actually does. We can address that. I think there is... Oh, yeah, there was a one bolt that's gone. Yeah, maybe a few. <laughs> On the front. It's nice. We do a great job at redoing all this shit. <laughs> Man, this ground is fucking gross. Yeah, it is gross. Tranny lines. Still need to kind of address where these are going. Yeah, we need to maybe shorten them. I don't know. Yeah, probably. But, but that's stuff in time. Yep. Stuff to make it drivable. I definitely think, yeah, like you're right, we're going to have to remove that motor mount entirely. Yep. Um, so, I mean, it's just a bolt there two bolts there and then i can feel with my hand up here i can touch it it looks like i don't know that was the bolt that had the freaking you know when we when we take this all out too we can put like proper bolts in those co co coolant jacket oh bolts. yeah yeah that's uh, proper what an, annoying, what an annoying issue that is yep and uh i mean i can reach the motor mount bolt back here you can see the one that goes through here Yep. There's a nut on that side, so we can remove this mount entirely. We can get the weight on there too, maybe, if that is part of the vibrations. Yeah, yeah there's isn't, you cannot see much of the of the cover though. Yep. Not from down here. I thought you could. I, w I would expect it too, but no. It's... Also, we're gonna take the coolant tank from up here off, and then we'll have like more room to get to the accessories. Yeah. Which I think that the alternator might be able to stay, but I think that everything else is gonna have to go. Definitely. Well, maybe not the power steering. Maybe not the power steering, and and maybe not the AC either. But like all the all the pulleys right super, here. Supercharger, right. intercooler lines. I would say the alternator, the coil packs, and then the water pump. I mean, the water pump won't need to come off, but the water pump. Well, the do pulley will have to come do, off. Do some of the water pump bolts go all the way through into the block though to hold on the cover? No. You don't no, think so? No. I don't think so. I have to reference some videos, but I uh, mean, I'm not, I'm not as sure to say that some coolant might not come out of those bolts, but um, okay. So let's think about what they don't we hold would. the timing cover on. Let's think about what we would need to buy. So, I mean, did we RTV this or is this a gasket? This is a gasket job. Okay, but... so new gaskets for the cover. I feel like replacing it with a gasket will be easier than having to get RTV down there. Oh yeah. Oh, so you're saying timing cover gasket? Okay. Yeah, timing cover timing gasket. Timing cover gasket. Gasket for these. Potentially water pump gasket. Um, new yeah. gaskets for the supercharger and then the intercooler. So we'll compile a list for the Bonneville of what we need 
and uh, let's maybe put the tire back on, put it back on the ground, and then let's just give it a vacuum test real fast. All right, guys. So, uh, yep, we, clear? We, we got the uh, vacuum gauge on here. And uh, that's much lower. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, that's showing like 17 or 16. Come here. That's a good number. Why you do this to me? The boost gauge is sitting about yeah, six, what the hell? about six psi. Where does that lead to? Maybe the it's that map sensor. Maybe that map sensor is bad. You're wrong. It, yeah. Hmm. Here, I'm gonna test something too. Here, I'm I'm curious what will happen if we unplug the map sensor. Yeah. Should we unplug it or just unplug the boost line, the vacuum line? Just unplug it. Okay. Get the electrical. Oh, okay. Yeah, now it's reading zero, so I think that map sensor is just dumb. Yeah, it must be. Hey, actually, um, I'm gonna plug it back in, see what it does. Yeah, it's showing the same. It's like showing seven. Huh? It's the same. It's showing like seven. Okay. It seemed. It almost seemed like it, it stuttered a little bit without the map sensor in. Yeah, so that seems like it's making good. It's right good in the, right in the green. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, removed the map sensor. I cleaned it out. Put some compressed air and electrical uh, connector cleaner in. Uh, clearly, it's not reading correct on his gauge, which it could have just been a dummy thing from the beginning, but. It could also it be worth it just to replace that because I mean it sounds like it's responsible for some of the like you know oper op PCM. operation of the yeah PCM boost airflow. However, um, it's always been kind of wonky on the vacuum side of things, but then on the uh, the boost side of things, it's been pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, and then when I was making more than ten psi, it would peg it. So and what then were I. What were those connections at the back? So those, I was actually curious about those at, at first, but yeah, then we I was saw. Like, okay. So uh, those are the for the EVAP and the uh, the EVAP canister and the EGR valve. Gotcha. And since we don't have those anymore, they're just sitting there. I think we should clip them at some point. Yeah, and then also we're just going to pop this off to see how that changes vacuum because, as Tristan mentioned, this is for the uh, God. I can't fucking say the word right now. It's for the bypass valve. Yep. And if you just if you just leave it unplugged, then it will it will still it'll still work with just the the normal boost pressure. It won't let the PCM tell it what to do. In fact, like I could probably even like run this to here instead of and just delete this because I mean I don't plan on running it. Let's start it. Maybe we should maybe we should test that too. Yeah, maybe we should. Um, I'm gonna go look at one. Oh yeah, see if there's improvement after cleaning it. Doesn't seem no. Doesn't seem like it. No. It's right, green seven, right, right where it was. Yep. Yeah, that gauge has been, you know, like that gauge has been kind of useless ever since I dropped it on a 3.0 goalie. Considering, you know, once it gets pegged, you don't know what it what boost it's getting at. But uh, the app fourth pro has been pretty accurate. You don't notice that drop, do you? Not really. Yeah, I wouldn't think you would. We could run that to that and just see. Yeah, let's let's try running that. See what it does. Now we've bypassed whatever controller this is. Yep. That's all it does. It reads the boost and then, uh, like I said, in some instances it will just it will open it up while you're driving to release the boost pressure. So uh, let's restart. And it opens up immediately. Yep. See what you're doing. Yep. You know what? Actually, this this may be wrong. 
because it's staying it's staying open. So as a throttle applies and boost comes to zero, that should shut. Actually, yes, you are right. And so it is functioning normally. Yeah. I was I was thinking it was it's just kind of weird that it's staying partially open, but then once it has enough pressure to close, it will make it close. Here, hold this real fast. You can really, you can really feel the rattle of the engine with that balancing shaft doing that. Yeah. Oh, you know that doesn't even like feel like it's sucking air. Now it's completely open. So now we've routed it back this way. It's completely open. It seems, it seems like it, oh, oh we oh, killed it shit that's fine well uh, it seems like it had uh less response really yeah it, it seemed like it was less responsive on the boost that time when we hooked it up that way so i think that this is controlling it um it did like seem that. more like more fine tuned i guess i don't Hopefully know it starts back <laughs> what if it just blew this engine up that'd be funny all right guys i think that's gonna end it we've uh you know tested diagnosed the bonneville we're going to put it back together He's gonna be able to drive it home and uh, we are just now prepared we're gonna buy all the stuff we need to do what we want to to it and uh, yeah it's gonna do it uh, follow our patreon uh, we're also we have a goal of hitting 2,000 subscribers before the end of this year and we're incredibly close to that so we'd really appreciate if you subscribed and uh, yeah check out the patreon there is behind the scenes footage and you'll get a free sticker so yeah the only thing we didn't mention in this video I think is that uh, we're planning on also uh, shortening up the transmission lines. You can see them hanging right there. Yeah, not the best, but we're just gonna shorten those up a little bit. I think once we're doing everything or once we get the engine back together, you know, like I can come back over and we could just do little things to it because uh, we just want it to run. Yep, exactly. So that's that's all we've ever wanted. Is we to just try wanted to, get to run. run. And then maybe see what it would do with the track because the previous yeah. best time was a 13.7 and now that the the transmissions are a bit beefier we can get wider tires for the front and it's a better like setup altogether more cooling IETs will be better uh it's got the cam yeah that was on 235s too yep yeah so should be better yeah those achilles they're they're you know sport oriented i yep. believe have so. better traction so better traction. all right that's gonna do it guys thanks for watching like subscribe and comment down below